Hello there. How can you increase your chances of survival from a very high fall? In the game Planet Side 2, you can equip an implant that allows you to survive a fall from a height of 230 meters. That implant is called Safe Fall. But how does it work? To answer this question, we first need to look at what exactly is dangerous about a free fall. As you might imagine, the problem comes from the landing part. You might have heard this before. Speed has never killed anyone and it never will. What gets you is brutal acceleration or brutal deceleration. But that's pretty much the same thing. This notion comes from Newton's second law that says that the exerted force equals mass times acceleration. If your speed is constant, no matter how high it is, your acceleration is zero, meaning that the exerted force on your body is also zero. In other words, even if you go very fast, at a constant speed you won't feel any force on your body. And that is something you are familiar with if you ever drove on the highway. However, if you quickly stop, your speed will change a lot in a very short amount of time, resulting in a high acceleration. This will result in a lot of force applied to your body. And that part is the dangerous part about falling without a parachute. As you hit the ground, you will have an incredibly short amount of time to reduce your vertical speed to zero. So you will experience a very high force on your body. In other words, to evaluate your survivability from a fall, we need to look at the deceleration that you will experience from the sudden stop when you hit the ground. Or, how many g's you will endure from that. 1g being the ratio of acceleration compared to earth gravity. A human being is able to take about 100 g's before it starts suffering from an acute case of deadness. So that's going to be our limit. Evaluating acceleration isn't too hard. Acceleration is simply the change in speed over time. In the case of stopping a free fall, it is simply the speed you are going at when hitting the ground over the time you used to land. This means that to act on your deceleration and improve your chances to survive, you can only act on two things. You can reduce your speed, or you can elongate as much as possible the time you used to slow down. Reducing your speed is possible by falling flat and extending your arms and legs outwards like skydivers do. But it only works up to a certain point and it doesn't reduce your speed enough to allow you to survive. On the other hand, elongating the time you take to come to a stop during impact is possible by landing in something like trees or deep enough snow. It doesn't offer any guarantee, but it does increase your chances of survival. However, in the game, safe fall isn't about any of that. Safe fall allows you to land on your feet from a height of 230 meters and walk away just fine. Let's calculate how many g's such a fall would pull. First, let's come up with the deceleration time. In the game, the slowdown on impact is instantaneous. So time would be zero, but that's impossible. So instead, let's make an assumption. If we assume that you are landing on your feet and you are trying to dampen the impact as much as possible, then your landing time will be about 20 milliseconds at terminal velocity. But see this value more as an order of magnitude than anything else. Secondly, we need the speed. How fast are you going when you hit the ground? Well, there are two ways to look at this. If you ignore drag, then the speed you gain from falling from a certain height is square root of 2 times gravity times height. Gravity on Earth is 9.81 meters per second per second, while the height we are considering is 230 meters. Plug the numbers in and you get 67 meters per second. So that's your speed on impact, right? Well, not so fast. This would be your speed if we didn't consider drag. Indeed, air acts on your body when you fall, slowing you down. The faster you go, the more air slows you down. After a certain point, you can't fall any faster anymore. You have reached a maximum speed that we call terminal velocity. Let's estimate that terminal velocity. The forces acting on your body when you fall are your weight and drag. Let's explain those forces. First, the weight. It's simply equal to your mass times the strength of gravity. Then the drag. Rho is the density of the fluid you are moving through, in our case, air. A is the frontal area of the body that is moving through the fluid. CD is a coefficient, a number, that is tied to how well that particular body moves through the fluid. And finally, V is the velocity. So when both those forces equalize, you stop accelerating. Meaning that by putting these forces equal to one another, we can solve for velocity. Plug the numbers in and we get our terminal velocity. With a person weighing about 75 kilograms falling on Earth, we get a terminal velocity of 55 meters per second, or about 200 kilometers per hour. Because 55 meters per second is lower than the 67 meters per second we calculated when ignoring air resistance, we will go with 55 meters per second from now on. So, let's recap. When falling from a height of about 230 meters, we will impact at a speed close to 55 meters per second and landing on our feet will allow us to stop in about 20 milliseconds. With these values, we can now estimate that our body will endure 275 Gs. This is almost three times the 100 Gs limit we have set. So, what does that mean for the safe fall implant? 
Well, safe fall doesn't slow down your fall, nor does it extend the time you have to dampen the impact. So, the only aspect safe fall can act on is your resistance to high Gs. Safe fall makes you extra resistant to high acceleration. According to our calculations, it allows you to enter nearly 300 Gs on an impact. This is great! This means that safe fall has other applications than just protecting from a fall. With safe fall, you become more resistant to high G maneuvers. You also become more resistant to hard impacts, like getting run over by a car, for instance. Oh, wait, what? What's this? Oh! Oh, I guess it all makes sense then. Safe fall does indeed protect you from car impacts. This confirms that safe fall does indeed act on your resistance to high Gs. That's, that's perfect. Hold on a minute. In the last video, some people told me that since we are on Araxis, I shouldn't use the value for gravity on Earth in my calculations. And, uh, well, that's fair. In the video on the fuel consumption of the Bastion, I used Earth gravity for a simple reason. In plain sight, two different objects experience different values for gravity. Some weapons have a bullet drop stronger than other weapons, for instance. This makes the evaluation of gravity on Araxis unreliable. However, in the particular case of a soldier falling through the air, we can evaluate the strength of gravity acting on that soldier. There is indeed a very simple experiment we can do. So, thank you for giving me a reason to talk about this. So how do we do this? Well, it's very simple. You just watch something fall. Let me explain. Starting with Newton's second law, we put mass times acceleration equal to mass times gravity. Mass cancels out and we are left with acceleration equals gravity. We integrate a first time to get the velocity in relation to time, we integrate a second time to get the vertical position in relation to time. Let's notice that the height at moment of impact is zero. Then we rearrange the equation and we get this. This expression gives us the strength of gravity depending on the height at which we dropped and the time it takes to hit the ground. That's our experiment right there. I climb to known height, I jump, and I record how long it takes for me to break my knees. Let's do this. With the NSF showing me how high I am above the ground, I can run the experiment. I climb up to 100 meters, I then drop and measure that it takes me 3.14 seconds to hit the ground. I plug these numbers in the formula and I get a gravity of about 20 meters per second squared, so twice the gravity on Earth. Ouch! This experiment is very simple and you can actually do it at home to measure the strength of gravity on Earth. Take a ball at a measured height, drop it, and measure how long it takes to hit the ground. Plug the numbers in the formula and you should get a value around 9.81. So, now that we know the strength of gravity on our axis, let's quickly go back to our previous equations. First, the value we got for terminal velocity. With the new value of g equals 20 meters per second squared, the terminal velocity is now 78 meters per second. Landing on your feet at 78 meters per second and absorbing the impact in 20 milliseconds gives us an acceleration of 390 g's. So safe fall actually allows you to absorb nearly 400 g's. Impressive. So there we have it. The safe fall implant works by increasing your resistance to high accelerations, meaning that it can actually do much more than just protecting you from a fall. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to subscribe and leave a like. If you have any ideas on what I should study next, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.